What is going on everyone? Welcome to the video. I am very excited. I am about to try that California Pizza Kitchen barbecue chicken pizza. A couple videos ago I had the one from Trader Joe's. In my opinion that was the best frozen pizza that I've ever had. This one actually has better macros. It has a good amount less carbs and less fat and also less protein but that means less calories. My guess is it can't possibly be as good as the Trader Joe's one just because of how good that one was and the worst macros. However, I have had this pizza fresh from the, uh, the actual restaurant and it is pretty good, I have to say. And I posted a picture of it on my Instagram and I must have gotten like 25 people telling me how good it is. So I'm very excited to try it. Uh, the oven is preheating right now, but I'll make sure to show you guys it and give you a quick little review. So this is what it looks like frozen. Uh, the actual pizza is bigger than the Trader Joe's one despite uh, better macros, so that's pretty cool. Ooh. And a salad to be healthy. All right guys, this pizza looks really good. Um, the, the crust is definitely thinner than the Trader Joe's one, but if it means that it has better macros, I could definitely take it. Let's take the first bite and compare the two. One more bite. So first, it's very good. The crust is definitely thinner than the Trader Joe's one. In terms of overall taste, which one is better? The Trader Joe's one is better. It has slightly better flavor. The crust is a bit thicker. So I have to give the taste edge to Trader Joe's. However, the macros for this one, it is better. I think it's 103 carbs. Trader Joe's is like 140. This is 27 fat. Trader Joe's is 39. The Trader Joe's one has like 58 protein, this one's 48. So overall, for the macros and taste, I would go with this one just because you could save more macros or something else and it's still very good. It's also slightly bigger. But if you're going strictly based on taste, don't care about macros, the Trader Joe's one does have the slight edge. This crust is definitely thinner and crispier, but overall, it's definitely, definitely good. I would definitely get this again and I recommend it. If you've actually ever been to CPK and got this, this is actually completely different. The one at the restaurant, it's not nearly as thin crust, it's more calories, different taste. Um, that one's a little bit better, but again, this one has way less calories. So for a frozen pizza with good macros, I would definitely recommend this one. I'll definitely get it again. Anyway, just thought I would show you this since I did show you the Trader Joe's one uh, a few videos ago. Anyway, the rest of the video is going to be my latest leg workout, so sit back, relax, and enjoy my pain, and hit the thumbs up. What's up everyone, welcome to the video. So uh, when I walked into the gym this day, they moved my, uh, my hack squat machine from where it was all the way up into like the middle of the walkway. So it was extremely awkward because I don't know if you could tell now, but like you couldn't walk through where I was. So people would keep coming in in like the middle of my set and it, like, it kind of looked like I picked up the machine myself and put myself in the middle of the gym because I'm just a weirdo like that. So I thought that was a little bit bizarre. Anyway, this is my latest leg hypertrophy day. I start this workout with hack squats. Uh, whenever I put these on my Instagram story, I always get the question, what's better, hack squats, leg press, or squats? So I do all three throughout the week, so I don't want to, I just want to put that out there first. If I had to say what, what's the best leg exercise, it's no question, squats are the best exercise for legs in general. So then that, I guess, leads to the question, why am I not doing squats on this workout? So I've answered this a few times. Um, I do squats on my strength day, and ideally I would start this workout with squats as well. Um, I do find squats superior, as I said. I just personally do not want to at, at this stage in my training. Um, I, I just prefer to do these hack squats. They're a lot easier to warm up for. I don't need to do as much mobility stuff. So it really saves me time in the gym. Plus, it's not that this machine is not effective. It's a great machine. So I don't feel like I'm really losing anything out on this. But if I had to tell you which one to choose between squats and hack squats, if you could only choose one, I would say go with the squats. But like I said, I do all of them throughout the week. So I did squats on my strength day. I do hack squats here. 
and I do leg press afterwards. So you don't need to choose one, you could do all of them. If you had to choose one though, I'll go with squats. Uh, here you see I just did a drop set. I did four sets total on this, so what you just saw was the fourth one. And then I do a drop set. I do a little bit of like a rest pause drop set. So here what you see I do, uh, after I drop the weight, on these reps I wait about three seconds at the bottom and then squat it up. And I go about two reps short of failure on those. And I really love drop sets. I find that they're a great intensity technique. They really feel like a nice finisher after you do your set. Um, so I, I put that in real time so you can see how long I actually wait for the drop set. The reason I like the pause at the bottom is because it just gives you a little bit added uh, intensity, I guess you could say. I only get like an extra six reps with this weight, whereas if I didn't do the pause, I could probably get like 12. So it's just like an extra technique that I've been playing around with that I kind of like doing. You could test it out yourself. Uh, here we move on to leg press. And you saw on the ends of the leg press and the ends of the hack squat, I might be the only person that you'll ever see put a five pound plate on a leg press or a hack squat, especially the leg press. Leg press is just, is just known for putting as many big 45 pound plates as possible on there and seeing how much you can leg press. I mean, that's what everyone does, right? Um, but you have to remember that you don't make progress that quickly. You don't go from, for example, four 45 pound plates per side to one workout, you're suddenly doing five 45 pound plates per side. That's a 90 pound jump and you don't get stronger that way. So I see all the time people, they'll keep like, a, they only use like the round weight. So like they'll bench like 185, 185, 185. And then there's nothing in between 185 and 225. They go from 185, maybe they'll do 205, but then suddenly they go straight to 225. So that's not how you make progress. Your body doesn't work in terms of 40 pound increments. Your body doesn't know what the plates are at the gym. Your body gets stronger slowly over time. So it never makes sense to me that you see people on the leg press that suddenly after like six months of one weight, they decide, oh, it's time to make a 100 pound jump. Like what about in between there? There's other plates. You could make a smaller jump than that. And that's just on leg press, but this applies for every single exercise. So I used to get made fun of when I deadlifted because I would have like 310 pounds on the bar. And so 315, that's three plates. That looks very nice. But 310... It's two 45s, it's a 25, it's a 10, it's a 5, and it's a 2.5. So it looks very ridiculous because, I mean, if you're looking at it, you're like, why not just put up 315? It's easier, it looks neater. But, again, you, if you really want to make progress, you really got to be consistent and make slow progress over time. Yes, 310 is close to 315, but 310 is also close to 305, so I, it doesn't make sense to go from 305 to 315. I like to take it, I like to go in smaller increments than that. If you don't want to do that, that's fine. But you got to remember, your body's not going to just make sudden increments from one work workout to another um, the same way the place at the gym go. So I actually even like micro plates, the ones that go into like, you could add like a half a pound or a quarter pound. I have them at home. I haven't been using them, but that's not a bad idea to use because again, the weights at the gym, even like dumbbells, they go up in bigger increments than a lot of times you can add weight. Let's take weighted pull-ups, for example. If you could do 10 pounds, you might be able to do 11 pounds, even 12 pounds, but you might not be able to do 15 pounds. So now what are you supposed to do? You're supposed to stick with 10 pounds until eventually you're able to do 15. It just, it doesn't make sense. So I always recommend you increase in increments as low as possible, as small as possible. And don't worry about the people that are looking around and making fun of you for adding a five pound plate on the leg press because you should be looking at them and laughing in your head as to how they suddenly went from five plates to six plates from one workout to another. Did they really gain 100 pounds of strength or are they just uh, clueless as to how to make uh, progress? So just remember, progress is slow. It's over time. You don't need to rush your progress. You just want to keep making slow progress over time. And eventually that two and a half will turn into a five, which will turn into a 10, which will eventually be another 45 pound plate and you'll be, getting pro you'll be making progress while everyone else that doesn't know what they're doing stays the same. So anyway, this workout is wrapping up. Um, after the hack squats, I did four sets in the leg press also with a drop set. There was three sets on the Romanian deadlifts, and then there's three sets, four sets on calves and three sets on these leg curls and the leg extensions. So hope you guys found this workout helpful. That's Deadpool shirt, 10, 90, uh, 10 bucks at Walmart if you're interested. 
And uh, if you enjoyed the video, found it helpful, please hit the thumbs up. I appreciate it. Thanks for watching, guys. And I will see you in the next video.